Welcome to a special edition of Pocket Now Live. This is super exciting. This is iPhone Day. I have a calendar and I cross off every day until iPhone Day. And today there were no more crosses left to be to be made. Um, we are here to talk about iPhone 5S and 5C and maybe some other surprises that will be uh, happening right now. Cooper, Cooper Tino, right? Look at you, Taylor. Right? Yeah. All right. Uh, we're here with Taylor, Jaime, and Michael. Say what up. What up? Hey guys. Don't sound so enthused, Michael. I'm 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 uh yeah. It's been it's been a hell of a morning back for me. If we have stuff going on at Apple, I don't even know if there's a live stream. My internet connection sucks. Like, everything sucks today. There's no live stream, which is weird because sometimes they have it and sometimes they don't. I want to start off with uh, with with a little bit of a prediction, uh, and I want to I want to everyone to 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 give us your prediction because this is a really big deal for Apple and it's a big deal for the industry. Every time Apple releases a product kind of reverberates throughout the industry. And the next 11 or 12 months, for some companies, it's a little bit about catch-up. Last year, we saw the iPhone 5 with aluminum. This year, we saw a lot of aluminum products come out, a lot of metal phones. Uh, the 5S is an interesting case. Uh, the 5C is clearly going to be for the lower-end market, finally appealing to people uh, that, that, that want something colorful, something better than the black or the white. The 5S is an interesting case because... It's going to have the same design, plus maybe a better camera, a faster processor, and this fingerprint scanner. And I think that's, I think that's where the magic's going to be. Check this out, guys. Do you guys remember the Motorola Atrix? Uh, it had a fingerprint scanner. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the first one, right? Yeah. Right, but it worked terribly. You had to scan your finger. It didn't read it properly. There was a lag. It had to think. The processor it just, it didn't work. Right. Yeah, uh, I suppose. Yes, I didn't right. have the first Atrix. I was not in the business then. No. Not, not in the business. No, neither did I. It was terrible. It was the terrible. placement was nice. It was a little too high. Like, if it were where the uh, the G2's volume rocker is, it would have been a lot better. Yeah, yeah, the placement was terrible. What I think Apple has done is an industry first. I think it's going to be revolutionary. I think they've got a fingerprint technology so good... It's built in the home button. You rest your finger on the home button, and within a second, or even an incalculable amount of time, you're at your home screen. It's extraordinarily fast, and uh, it bypasses the lock screen and doesn't necessitate that you have a password anymore. It's just seamless. Do we have any uh, intel on that? I'm sorry, Brandon, to interrupt you, but do we have any intel to support that? Has Apple uh, acquired any uh, fingerprint like metrics uh, companies? I didn't um, I didn't look back through patents. Uh, Wall Street Journal confirmed that there's going to be a fingerprint reader. Yeah, they're, the part leaked. The, the, the part really? leaked. Yeah. It's going to have a silver ring around it. And another thing that Apple could do with this fingerprint reader, besides immediate access to your lock screen to only you or authorized users, your wife, your kids if you want, is have it attached to an API developers can use to link passwords to the fingerprint. So, for example, if you're logging into Facebook or other other apps that require you to log in multiple times, when you type in your password, it'll say, do you want to link this to your fingerprint? And you say yes. So the next time you're logging into Facebook, you just tap your finger, and with, within a quarter of a second, you're in. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be nice. Um, That's actually... Just, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say that, uh, that Motorola's take on this is kind of interesting because they have this whole trusted device thing where if you connect a device that, that you use regularly to your phone, you can set it as a trusted device to where, like my Pebble is a trusted device on my Moto X, so when I open or unlock my Moto X um, and connect my Pebble, it will stay unlocked until I tell it to lock again. So <clears throat> it, it's interesting, and I only bring that up because there was, um, I can't remember the name of it, but kind of not a smartwatch, but like a, just a little band you wear around your wrist, that works as a password for everything, for your computer, for Facebook. I can't remember how it works. Oh yeah. But, um, it, it was yeah. It's really cool and it's interesting because that that's what a smartwatch can do. That's what um, how I guess smartwatches can become a little more useful is they are our identity. Um, so th there's that, but uh, the only thing with with a fingerprint scanner is that you've got an advantage because you can't really lose your finger. Exactly. Yes, you can, but. Unless somebody cuts it off, don't mess with the mafia. Um, yeah. What, what I want to what I want to do is kind of go around and, and talk about what we our relationship is with Apple products. We've all used Apple products. We all own Apple products. Some of the some of us use use them regularly. Some of us don't. Let's start with uh, uh, Michael. What, what is your relationship and, and and sort of what what are you excited about today? 
I'm glad. I'm I'm glad we're starting with me. I have a question. Is is Jaime the one keeping an eye on the uh, on the news? Yeah. Uh, on the feed. Taylor and I are. Yeah. And okay. I am. Too. Oh, I am. All right. Uh, okay. You and Taylor are okay. Well, good. Well, Taylor knows now because I yeah. I, <laughs> this has just been crazy. So as far as Apple products go, it, they power my desktop experience. I've got a MacBook Air that I run all of my pocket now business on, including video editing, which is wild. The fan is going like crazy right now. It's what I'm using to broadcast now. I've got a second MacBook Air that I just acquired that I use to run my other YouTube uh, business. And I've got an iPad 4 or 3, which is Pocket Nows, uh, which I don't use very often at all anymore because it's so big and heavy. But Michael, do, do you want to do, do a shout-out to your, your other YouTube uh, endeavor? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Rapid Nation. Look it up. Or, you know, Rapid Nation, as everyone insists on mis misspelling it. Uh, but, <laughs> no, uh, so it, it's cool stuff. It's fun. But uh, the iPhone, I have not carried since 2008, and this will be the first time in history, assuming our plan is still intact, uh, for, for me to go buy an iPhone, and that's going to be the 5S, and I'm really looking forward to doing that because I haven't carried an iPhone since... George W. Bush was in office. So, oh. so you're lo you're looking forward oh. to going back to that experience, see what has changed in the last oh, five years. That'll yeah. be an interesting yeah. experiment. Uh, Jaime, uh, per oh. pretty much a permanent iPhone user, right? Oh man, yeah. I guess a couple of years ago, that was like the only phone that I could get that was like compelling on a planet in my country. And I guess that's the reason why I became the Apple guy. And so I have an iMac, I have a Retina Display MacBook Pro, I have two Apple TVs. I ha I've had every iPad ever since launch. I have a mini right now, which I am terribly repentful to have gotten. <laughs> uh, iPhone, iPhone 5. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess I, I have a time capsule. Uh, uh, I Pretty much all my ecosystem in the house. I have a Mac mini upstairs that holds all my movie studio. Um, and everything is pretty much just set around the Apple products. I, I guess I delve into the ecosystem uh, I, I bit into it and I liked it um, simply because it works. I guess for me, it's like the, there are a lot of things that are really no-brainers that that work within the Apple ecosystem. And uh, you know, I guess you know, going back to that fingerprint scanner thing that you were talking about, um, I think that for me, passwords have always been this thing where you have to be hiding. If you really don't want people to see your password, you have to be hiding your screen so that people don't see your password. Yeah, um, and it's just that dumb thing where it, nothing is in, it, is nothing is um how do you say when nothing is fil is foolproof? Yeah, nothing is bulletproof except wanna... your except your fingerprint. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want I, I I'm going to be interrupting as as we go around the table here. Um, uh, they're talking iOS seven now. Presumably they're going to announce a date, and I think they're going to announce. I'm ninety nine percent sure. I put this on Twitter that the the Goldmaster is released today. Yeah. Um, it's just going to happen. Um, something, I, I've been running iOS 7. I'm, I've been using an HTC One, but I'm running iOS 7. Something I haven't seen yet is, and Jaime, are you running iOS 7? Yeah, of course. Have you seen any up updates to apps for the new flat no. UI yet? None. And you won't, and you won't until, until it actually gets launched. So the APIs don't go active uh, for the public until until it goes live. So what you're going to see is iOS 7 is going to launch, and right there, you better prepare, because like 40, 50 apps or whatever you have installed are going to have updates already, just ready to go to go live. Right, because they've had all this time to cook them up, right? Yeah. And just sitting yeah. Yeah. And, 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 it always happens that way. You get the you get the final software update, and then boom, everybody upstate, updates their apps right there on the same and, day. Uh, there are a lot of upset developers about it, too, because you have to completely rewrite the, the UI, yeah. because it's totally yeah. different. There's nothing the same. And yeah, if you want, realize. if you want a custom experience in your UI on your app, you have to code your buttons and everything again. So it's yeah, yeah. it's a lot of stuff to redo. I mean, you even have to redo the keyboard uh, to get the new uh, iOS 7 keyboard. Uh, oh, Taylor, that's actually just a command, but but yeah, you have to redo that too. Taylor, while you're uh, while you're chatting, what's your relationship with Apple products? Well, I use uh, I use a MacBook Pro Retina display. Uh, their keyboard and their magic trackpad. I have an iPad mini and an iPhone 5. I'd ha I've had every iPad so far. Um, and I've had the iPhone 4, the 4S, and I've carried them most of the time since the 4 hit Verizon. I wrote about that yesterday. Um, when the Verizon iPhone landed, I bought it and I used an iPhone from that point until just a few months ago. So I've been a, primarily an Android and iOS guy and uh, since the 1020, I switched away from the iPhone and haven't looked back. So I'm not terribly interested in the iPhone 5S. 
Um, I'm actually more interested in the 5C just because of what it means for Apple and uh, emerging markets, but I, I, I probably I, won't carry the, the 5S. I probably I, won't. I don't think the iPhone 5C is going to go aside from It's going to be a China phone. I oh, have this, no, no. I think, I think they're going to offer that everywhere. I really I, have. It, it's going to be on the U.S. No, as the okay, so, so for, okay, so for me, it's either they ditch the iPod Touch and leave the iPhone 5C as the budget alternative because the price tag is pretty much going to end up matching the iPod Touch. you got to yeah, get I mean, a cell plan, though. It's a huge cost long term. Well, well, you wouldn't if you wanted to just use it as an iPod. You yeah, what if better, you just sold it yeah. unlocked uh, like as, a, as an iPod? Uh, I want to say that the Siri improvements are being announced right now. And yeah, Siri improvements. Uh, you can search Twitter, um, I Wikipedia. Hate that they use Bing. I hate that they use Bing. Oh, I... Uh, <laughs> but, uh, bleep. Hey, so, um, Adam, Adam Lane I'm is like... I know, I was just going to say, Adam, <laughs> Adam Lane and Adam Dowd are like, shut up, dudes. No, but... Uh, <laughs> No, but no, but for real, uh, Bing. I've been using it more frequently on my Windows phone because I've had the 1020, and Bing is is improved. I still prefer Google. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to front like I, I like Google better. But Don't Bing search results are much better. I'm not gonna not gonna front on this show. Yeah, so okay. can Siri compete with Google now yet? Probably no. not. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Wait. What do you mean? Can it compete with Google? It does some things better than Google now already. Like the natural voice interface is way better than yes. Google. Now. Yeah. The the the. So it speaks okay. answers back to you a little more naturally, but no, it, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. The input is much easier. You can talk to Siri oh. like a person. You still can't talk to Google now like a person nearly as well as you can do with Siri. No. Siri, Siri, is Siri is still, and that's important because Siri is still more popular with old folks as a result. <laughs> Siri yes, is an old folks. Much... I am an old. Folk. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> uh, see, I was gonna say Siri is much better integrated into the phone. It's a little more natural to use, uh, but but it's so much less reliable. Like like twenty to 50% of the time, I can't even use a damn thing. It just times out. Do you guys find that with Siri? I don't have, I have I don't a lot have of issues with Siri. But the, the, I what don't have my any point. issues with Siri, and I have an accent. I, I guess my biggest problem, <laughs> and, and, I'll, and I'll go with, with Taylor on this when it comes to Google Now, is I just love Google Now because I don't have to even talk to the damn thing. It already yeah. knows what I'm looking for. It already yeah. knows what I've just searched. It already knows what my favorite teams are. It already knows the places where I go every day. And for me, that is far better than Siri. Even though Siri, I mean, I, it never gets me calling an application wrong. Um, it never gets my questions wrong. It never sends me to, a, to a, a desktop search or anything. It never does that. Siri is that reliable, but I guess that Google now steps it up a notch. That's me. Yeah, it's, it's true automation in that uh, I open. Uh, what, what are you doing? Who did that? Stop oh, that. Stop I, that. I, I, oh, I, stop I, ringtone. Get out of here. <laughs> I, I was just going to say that you just have to open it, and it, it's the information is there waiting for you, so it, it pulls automatically. Um, it, it, it gives it. I'm at anywhere, a coffee shop, and it's like you're 15 minutes from home, and there's traffic. You know, so there are things that Google now does that that Absolutely. Siri will never be able to the do. The card view and stuff like that. That no, no, no. All that's very far superior to what Siri is doing. I was just talking about the voice interface. Yeah, that's true. Um, you're, old, uh, so, you're still so, an old man. I am. <laughs> Hey, um, just a just a little update. Uh, we're still talking about iOS 7. Just some some recaps of the features. I'm I'm watching closely to see if there's anything new uh, that they're talking about. But to, I'm going to circle back to that discussion that we started off with, which is our relationship with Apple products. Um, about half the year I use an iPhone. About half the year I use an Android phone, and even that's a hundred percent of the year. Sometimes I use Windows Phone, and the reason is because my wife, my two best friends, my parents, my brothers, and everyone else that I know pretty much uses an iPhone. So iMessage, FaceTime, they all work between us very well. When I switch to Android, that all kind of breaks down a little bit. Um, so the iPhone's a really important device to me, and the iPhone is still the only device that can do everything well, and Jaime knows exactly what I'm talking about. The yeah. cameras kick ass, the speed yeah. and fluidity is great, the app situation is wonderful, productivity is there, <laughs> customizability is the only thing that's really not there with, 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 uh, with the iPhone. Yeah. But for that, I use an Android phone sometimes. But I, I, I'm a, you know, I'm very much into the Apple ecosystem, like Jaime, because my family and friends are. I guess that's a different reason. Jaime, you have all of the services on all of your devices, right? And that's what no. It's and the thing is, in this country, iPhone is the new BlackBerry. It's like everybody has an iPhone now, um, and so it's it's just easier to communicate with everybody. It's just, for example, this new AirDrop feature that's coming in iOS seven is going to be the bomb. It's like everybody's like, oh, you don't have Bluetooth file sharing on your phone and we do on Android. Well, this is going to blow this is going to blow file sharing out of the water. It's just it's very simple. 
Um, I guess I guess my, my thing about Apple products is the, the the simplicity, the fact that I could be upstairs and I could just restart my router, uh, which obviously is an Apple product, from my phone without needing to move. Uh, it's it's just that thing where it's it's a no brainer. I I can't believe that it's a no brainer, but that nobody else gets it right. It's a it's just everything is connected. Uh, just some updates here. We lost Michael. He'll come back. Uh, they're showing some apps that are taking advantage of um, the new flat design in iOS 7, Zillow, Evernote, OpenTable, more to come. Um, and we're getting really close, I think, in the in the presentation where they're going to talk about a release date. Oh, here it is, September 18th, folks. So Ooh. it is out. Hey. That I still think the Gold Master is coming out today. No, uh, the Gold Master will be out today. You can bet on that. Yep, and so September 18th, a week from tomorrow. Yeah, you can uh, bet it. The Gold Master is out today. And Tim Cook is back out. Thank goodness they didn't take too much time. Yeah. Hey, Hello. welcome back, Michael. I have a question for you Sorry. since you're back and, yeah. and ready to go. How long are you going to carry the iPhone because everyone else will be as well? So can you handle that, Mr. I'm gonna, Hipster? I'm going to carry the iPhone. <laughs> I'm going I'm to carry the iPhone and, and, until enough time has passed that, that every third person I see on the street has one, and then I'm going to, I'm going to throw oh, it. Okay, like, so everybody in the street is going to have it before you, Michael. <laughs> Why, wait, wait, no, no, they're not. I'm waiting in line for it. That's not, oh, I didn't, oh, yeah. I didn't How many people exactly do you think are going to be in front of you in that line? It's like half the population of Boston is going to have it before you get to the end of that line, man. That's are you cool. going to Are you going to take your 1020 and film it? And, and yeah, I'm going to have the 1020 in the other pocket just so I can counterbalance because I have to have the least carried phone <laughs> in Boston. Hey, wait a sec, guys. Uh, another update. The, the September 18th date seems to only be for iPhone 5 and 4S. Uh, so presumably I I iPad will be a little bit later, which makes sense because the iPad's behind. A and, and that was rumored. That was expected, actually. That was part of the rumors that the iPad launch would take some time. It, it, it happened with iOS 4. You remember when 4.1 and 4.2 came out? There was no 4.1 for the iPad, and it went directly to 4.2. You know um, what that also means? Uh, that also means that I think this the pre-order date of September 20th for the 5S and 5C is right because iOS 7 has to be completed before these devices ship. Yeah. You know, and, and it's just one thing that I, I really admire about this, you know, this company. For example, none of my previous, none of my last year, last year Galaxy phones have 4.2.2. They just don't. Nobody has it yet. Um, they are waiting to launch everything for them to bring 4.2.2 to last year's phones so that they can have enough time to sell this year's phones. But then you have Apple who doesn't worry about that. They're not worried about not trunking one phone over another phone because of a software update. They still release their software updates for their phones. I guess that's just another thing that I like about using Apple products. Yep, everyone gets the updates. There's no crap. There's no waiting. It's just there. Yeah, but didn't they get caught for scheduled obsolescence? Like not optimizing the software for older hardware, so it really yeah. just kind of makes Listen, it crappy. But, but but here's the deal. I mean, you have a single core processor on the iPhone 4. Um, for example, all that uh, interactive thing that you can do with the camera, like the Instagram thing, you can't do on a single core processor. Big news. So, Big what? news. Big news. Uh, all five of the iWork apps are now going to be free. Do I get a refund for the ones I paid five dollars each for? I didn't yeah, pay for no. any of them. So that includes what? iPhoto, iMovie, uh, pages, pages, and numbers. I didn't yeah. pay for any of them, so I'm happy. I paid for iPhoto. Dude, that's awesome! Like, what is the, like that? This that's a serious value add for the for the whole ecosystem yeah. now. I mean, is like, it really though? Yeah. Like, is anyone yeah. like, dude? Uh, yeah, 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 iPhoto, look, iPhoto it allows them. Awesome. It allows them to compete directly with Microsoft, who's been like pushing and that Office integration on all the surface. Yeah, that's true. But Drive. That's well, that's Google a big with punch Drive. In the yeah, balls. But, yeah. 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 Yeah, but yeah, you're right. I did pay for oh, iMovie, for example. For those of you that have never used iMovie, I do recommend it on the iPad. It's really good. You know, I, hey, I edit the pocket now daily, and I, it's really yeah. good. Yeah, Michael, right. you should take your Lumia 1020, shoot the video, edit it on the iPad while you're still in line, and then update it, like upload it that while you're in like, line. That sounds like a, a like not much could possibly go wrong with that scenario. I'm sure that, that would be perfect. Perfect. <laughs> and, and it would be great. Yeah. All right, so now we're now we're talking about iPhone. Uh, Tim Snarkly said, "Now I'd like to talk about iPhone." A couple of you might be expecting this. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's so funny. Really? Yo, really? yo, I miss Steve Jobs. I gotta say it. Yeah, you, you remember that moment where where he announces the iPhone four, and he's like, "Stop me if you've seen yeah. this." 
Yeah. That was hilarious. What I like, though, is that Tim Tim adheres to the same formula of the previous Apple events, and it's fun. It's it's proven thing. It's like he's, you move into a new category. Okay, we're going to talk about iPhone now. Now we're going to tell you about how successful the last one was. We're going to set the stage for this next one, which is going to build on the success of this previous model. And, you know, it's simple. Samsung. There's nothing crazy about it, but it's fun. It's the same kind uh, of... Yeah, for Samsung example. tried to do that with their, their press event. That press event was so weird. What, the one at Eva? Yeah. But they, they, it, wasn't, they, it wasn't as weird as they usually get. Yeah, well, they're like, hey, this is what we got. Uh, okay, now we're going to show you that again, much slower. <laughs> but they, they did past, that, and then oh. they went back and said... Okay, oh. in the past, when we've introduced an iPhone, we lower the price of the old iPhone. This year, we're not going to do that. This year, we're going to replace the iPhone 5. With the C, yep. Two yeah. new designs. Oh my gosh! Well, that's, it, it, everything well, that's kind of stupid, though. Two new designs. Okay, so fine. I, hey, Aaron, tell, would you would you give it five hundred milliseconds before you're negative about it? No, no, I will not. <laughs> only I only say that it's not a bad idea. It's just bad because they'll have so much stock left over. What are they going to do with all the other iPhone fives that are out there? They're going to sell them. They're simply. It's the same. It's the same chassis. All they're going to do is drill a bigger hole for ah, that. Ah, they're going to let's rip off the panels and. I don't think they're going to call them all back and take them apart and then put them back together. You know, you know what I what I'd really like, honestly, I would really like for a bigger iPhone 4S. You know, for a five for a four inch, you know, uh, steel stainless steel with a glass on glass. Oh, iPhone get out 4. of here! So the, uh, the right. iPhone 5C is official. It's called the 5C. Yeah. Um, Made yeah, with all cheap. the incredible tech that customers love with iPhone 5. Okay. So it's just an iPhone 5 with colors. Let's go to the 5S. Wake me up. Can we can we get can we get a 4.7 inch iPhone please? Can we? No, so, so the so the thing okay so the, there's more fun and colorful yeah the colors are all coming nobody's really surprised about the colors but this is Yay. cool and then they're about to show a video here so the colors might not get us excited but as far as regular consumers go oh, yeah I'd love to see this like color spread uh, especially as the, in the awesome way that Apple can present it because we know how they do it already with the iPods. You know yeah. what I mean? It really looks good in the store, and it gets my salivatory glands happening. I made that word up, but so you know, you know, Honestly, this is going to be, like, really interesting. For me, I love that strategy where the old <laughs> iPhone drops in price and, and remains another year because that automatically makes your purchase non-obsolete. So here are the colors. You've got lime green, whitish, uh, bluish. Lime green. Gray, pretty purple. I want <laughs> yellow. I I want you guys to know, like, while I was effusing the virtues of this colored iPhone, my friend, uh, my friend Chris, who's following our live blog, hey man, just texted me to say, also the iPhone 5C looks like poop. Silly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't agree, Chris and Larson, but you are great. It's like yesterday's comments of fucking out daily. They were like, "What are your predictions? We're gonna get an iCrap, the I'm iPhone." Uh, iPhones, the C stands for crap. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's getting the comments are like that. It's getting to be time for me to write a long editorial on why everyone needs to shut up about the Apple bashing because it's just out of. You know, mind. and it's just so funny. It, it's so funny. They bash it, and still, those are the most view, most viewed videos. Those are, you know, it, it's no. just the most popular time for anything. It's like every single year, year over year, our most popular day is iPhone Day. It's it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Because one of the cool things about um, Selfish, uh, the OS and the phone, I don't remember if they have Yola. a phone. Y uh, Yola's phone, but is it the Yola phone? Or is it, what is, I don't remember the name. Yeah, uh, basically. But, but one of the things they did, and one of the things that Windows Phone does, or Windows Phone manufacturers, is they match the color with the color of the phone, and that's what Apple's doing here. It's kind of interesting. And, and, and they've done it with the iPod Nano lineup. Oh, have they? They have the wallpaper matching the hardware casing yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So just, the just pink phone has a pink here. wallpaper. Just, just some updates here. Um, so they're making a case with it that yeah. is soft, feel silicone, silicone, silicone rubber. Rubber. Uh, yeah. It's really, it, it's really weird. It has perforations in the back, like these holes. Uh, I guess to give you a nice grip, and then also you get this idea of doing two colors. So the case can be one color, the device can be another. You can kind of moto exify it a little. <laughs> right, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's uh, polycarbonate. You know, I'm just I'm just surprised that they hold stuck. Up, hold up, hold up. The case is polycarbonate or the casing? No, no, no. The, the phone is polycarbonate. The case is silicone rubber something. Okay, and then it's reinforced steel on the chassis. Most likely. Yeah, that's what they're. That's what um, this uh, the end gadget live blog is saying. I'm Four inch. Lie, I mean, it doesn't look bad. It it really doesn't. No. I like it. So I, I would carry see. a lime green iPhone. I would do it. 
Okay, four inch retina display, integrated. Integrated touch. touch. What does that what mean? The, what in the, the display. Number, you're probably talking about the lamination. In uh, cell. In cell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in cell. Well, it's RGB standard, widescreen video. Right. That's like the basic. Fine. A6 yeah, processor. Exactly this is the same phone. It's bigger. Okay, this is good. Okay, this is good. For those of you that don't know, uh, the A6 processor on the iPhone 5 rocks. Crazy. It is, Crazy. It is, it is really good. It is really good. Okay, 8 megapixel camera. So this is pretty much the iPhone 5 only with a plastic chassis. Well, that's what Tim Cook said, or not Phil Schiller said. He said, everything you love about the iPhone 5, just plastic. But it's, yeah. it, well, it's, got a bigger, it's got a bigger battery, so that's awesome, because the iPhone 5 already has pretty good battery life. Well, yeah. what do we know what the... No, they're not going to announce a milliamp hour rating that's Apple. They have no, an, they don't. They never do. No. There's an improved front-facing camera. With Which higher... Larger 1.9... Oh, so the, the front-facing camera is actually 1.9. Hey, Apple, can we get optical image stabilization? What would that no. be? <laughs> well, not on the 5C. <laughs> not on the 5C. It's More currently on the 5S, bro. Just you know, th does, any, th that any, does any of you ever miss, like, the iPhone 3GS, the whole plastic design? No. The... no. I hated that design. I, I do. Not, I did not hate that design. I, 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 I like it. I like it because I'm obligated to because I'm a, I'm a nostalgia whore. So, yeah. I, like, I oh. love the way it felt in the hand, I guess. Yeah, it was pillowy. It was nice. Until it started, yeah, okay. the plastic oh, bubbles started okay, showing so, up. Okay, more LTE bands, up to 100 megabits per second downloads. Uh, uh, 802.11, no AC. CNN. No AC. There is uh, no AC on this phone. It's Bluetooth 4.0. Why, uh, Apple? Why? $100 or $200 for the two year contract? Oh, my God. Why? Why? That's, that's too high. Uh, okay, so it's a hundred dollars for the sixteen gig, and wait, wait a second. This is pretty much an iPhone five. They're just changing the back, exactly. so it was dropped to a hundred dollars anyway. Right. Yeah. I don't so, know. Yeah. Happened. So this is uh, sixteen gig is ninety nine, uh, thirty two gig is one ninety nine, which is great. You get the thirty two gig option. That's awesome. And then the cases of uh, Apple. Oh, well, every, you know, I, I eventually learned that cases in the United States all cost thirty thirty bucks. It's funny because here they cost five dollars. Um, yeah. But yeah, the case the, that uh, rubber case will cost thirty bucks. Hey, you know what this arsenic is going to do, guys? The the cases are environmental checklist: arsenic free, mercury free, and Android free. <laughs> uh, Android so free. Hey, hey, guys! You know what this is going to do by creating these two different products? It's going to make the 5s seem so much more high end because of the fact that they're keeping the five around. So yeah. people are going to they're going to go with the 5s because they know that the 5c is like you know, it's always been here's, that. Here's my problem with it. So they had a perfect model with the iPhone 5 going down to a lower end model and having introducing a new phone. Their old model was great because they didn't have to redevelop a whole new phone every time. They just developed one phone and pushed it down the line, kept developing it, and then made a new phone. Now each year they're going to make two phones. So is that really going to constitute more sales? Is it going to create more sales, or is it going to just make them spend more money developing a whole other phone? So I, I kind of understand what's going on here. See, you know, for example, this aluminum design of the iPhone 5, let's face it, whoever doesn't like it, I mean, come on, this is a beautiful phone. Um, you can't just come up and come, come out with a new, different, you know, slightly redesigned BMW all the time. They build one design, and they try to keep it for as long as they can. It's, and it's so a, what, they're, what they're trying to do is they're trying to keep the high-end design to be this for another year. And then the iPhone 5C, they just, you know, they, they rethought the whole budget idea. And I think it's a smart idea. It's a smart approach. Here's something that's interesting. They're calling it beautifully, unapologetically plastic. That's awesome. Yeah, that's uh, Sir Joni Ive in the, in the video there saying that. I think that's pretty cool. They're, they're also calling out the seamless nature of it. I mean, you know, they're trying not to make it sound like the cheap, the little low end. Well, it's not. I mean, it's an iPhone 5, and there's nothing cheap about it. it it's just got, It just has a plastic case, which, which everybody was going to buy anyways for it. Right, and the thing is, like, I think it's important that they have this product because, yeah, their old model worked well for a long time, but, you know, what did we see this past year? We saw Wall Street get really, really impatient with Apple, and we saw the value of the company fall because it didn't grow as quickly as it was growing before. Of course, that's inevitable, but what do you do when you have that problem? You crank out some more products that are going to be bought in large volumes. You know, and... I, think, I think that the whole Apple stock price drop was mainly because Apple has not launch products this year as they have last year. Like, no, and not, for example, last year was a mistake. All years before, you would notice that they would sparse their launches. Like, early in the year, the iPad. Then mid-year, the iPhone. 
then end of the year, the new Mac lineup. But then last year, in the fall, they launched five different products on one event. You know, the iPhone 5, the iPad mini, the new iPod. You know, you remember that event? That event was so long that people were bored by the end of it, and they launched everything in the fall. It was intense, um, yeah. And so that's really what hit their stock price, the fact that they haven't kept people on the edge of their seats. Rumors, ro control rumors, because we, we, I think that Apple does this. I mean, uh, control rumors are not going to keep people on the edge of their seats. Um, I, I think that in the case of this, you know, again, I how were they going to re since this design had no problems with it, no antenna issues, no nothing with it. How are they going to differentiate the five with the five S if they both look alike? In the case of the four and the four S, they looked sort of alike, but you could still tell the difference between one and the other. Wait, the four and the four S weren't they like like completely totally identical? identical? Yeah, but yeah, the, 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 the band, only band, was the yeah, the, yeah, the only difference was the antenna. Yeah, and nobody's going to pay attention to the antenna. No. Oh, I could I could totally tell a four from a four S. Do you know? From you could, course, but you're you're, you're you're an expert. You're on the side of the road. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I see one now, and I have to ask my friends: Is that a four or four S? Mm -hmm. No, so, I can so totally, they, I can totally tell it. What they're really touting is that with this case, uh, the case color combination plus the device color combinations, you can make like forty different color combinations essentially, which is very interesting. And the colors are ugly. I mean they're all yeah. so muted and pastel. There's no like bright red. Okay. Ferrari we, red or you know. We said that about the iPhone five until we held it. So Well no, these are pastel colors except for the yellow and green. They're all yeah, pastel. I, I guess I guess for example, I completely panned the iPhone five and once I held it, I was like, okay, fine, I like it. Well, <laughs> no, I'm not yeah. I'm not bashing that. I'm just bashing the colors. I don't like the colors. I, and I don't, I don't like, like the cases. But, but think about it. Think about it. Think about a bold, rich, highly saturated color case, and then iOS 7's muted pastels. That wouldn't work. Like the, 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 this is a unified hardware and software. There, there is nothing muted about the pastels on iOS 7. Yeah, that, iOS 7 is very vibrant and that and thing neon is and, like. All right, oh, all right. Well, fine. They're vibrant pastels, but like it's, it's, it's still... greener than green. So yeah, somebody made a comment on the on one of the pocket now dailies and was like, "Imagine a colorful phone and a colorful UI." And I'm like, "Okay, so fine. A muted back with a colorful front is not a bad idea, actually." All right, guys, we're getting we're getting to the iPhone 5s now. The name is confirmed as iPhone 5s. It's got a 400 horsepower and uh, <laughs> it's got about 1,500 foot pounds of torque in there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God! If Schiller calls it perhaps the most forward-thinking phone anyone has ever made, so uh, when you make no. a claim like when you make a claim like that, my tail starts to wag and get um, pointy in the direction of north. Uh, <laughs> and pointy in the direction of the buy button. He, I mean, he's really he's really hyping okay. this up. But so, by the way, by the way, viewers, uh, for example, Apple products are like the one those one products where you you know getting review units is pretty much impossible. Those are actually bought. You know, every one of those reviews, which which in the other case, it's completely different. And it comes in gold. But it's not gold, gold it's champagne. It's like champagne, yes. Late gold and silver, like Yeek. the earth. I'm sticking to silver. I want platinum, you know? That's that's where the business is. I want all matte black everything. You all know, they, they, they already made a MacBook Pro titanium. I all mean. right, so th there it is. It has the, 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 the dual flash thing. It comes in those three colors, gold, <laughs> silver, and slate. Um, so how is this for the most forward-thinking phone anyone has ever made? We're going to find out. All right, everyone just quiet until... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it is the Champagne. gold standard. Champagne phone. Ah. It's, got, it's got a ring around the home button. It's like ring around the rosy song. You know, the only reason why I would get uh, the golden phone is because obviously everybody else is going to be carrying an iPhone 5, and that's just going to make me stand apart. That's the only reason. Yeah. I hope so they listen, made these. I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad the choice is there because, I mean, a lot of people, I guess a lot of people prefer this. I mean, obviously they wouldn't have made it, but I'm, I'm glad that they've retained the other choices too. You know, that, black. you know, that slate color actually looks good. What, it yes. looks the same slate as the black, gray. doesn't it? No, no. It's, 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 a, it's a grayer aluminum. Yeah. Uh, I'll, so I'll put it this way. It, I'm gonna, if I get an iPhone, I'm going to cover it in something because I don't like how easily it just... Dean's, mine is just absolutely trash, and I carried it in a case most of the year. I'll, I'll tell you something about that. Okay, so I got this phone with Apple Care Plus, and because, you know, Mr. Brandon Miniman pretty much trashed it in about a week. i got to interrupt um, you. It's got an A7. Okay, A7 processor, 64-bit. 64 64 bit. Wow. What does that okay. mean in a phone? 
So Taylor, so Taylor, for example, I have swapped this phone twice. Um, and this last time that I went to swap it, for some reason, I've been using the phone exactly in the same way that I did before, and it's got no dents. So I, I don't know. I think that it pro they're probably investing think they in, did a grade, in a higher grade sheet of aluminum. For they this. may have. Mine came damaged, and they did. They wouldn't exchange it. A Mine lot came of people got damaged. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, we're world's first and only 64-bit smartphone. I, no, one I bet, ever, no one ever talks about that. I bet that Apple's going to tell us about why we should care about that. I bet they're going to put it in simple terms that we can understand. Let's Maybe see. Maybe an inspirational video. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, wow. Well. All, all right. right. Oh, my gosh. It's got the App Store. Just kidding. <laughs> Modern instructions. <laughs> two, two okay. 64-bit desktop class architecture. Modern instruction set. Two times general purpose registers. Can somebody, where's Joe? Somebody get Joe on the phone. <laughs> Two times floating point registers. Over 1 billion transistors. 102 millimeters square die size. So that's, that's twice as many transistors for roughly the same size as the A6. And get it as. It's about the same size. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't really know. All Actually, I mean, you know, I, th I, think, I think what we're getting here is more power. That's what we're, what we're being made to understand about this device. So, so more force means apps. more better. <laughs> Apple's apps are 64-bit. Developers can choose; can, they, it can run in 32, or developers can make it 64. So more work for developers, but you know it's the future. And they will do it, and it's backwards compatible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and forward compatible. Hmm. All, all built-in apps will be re-engineered, seamless developer transition, Xcode support, runs 32-bit and 64-bit apps. Uh, all right, what does that mean? What does that mean? My I mean, Android, awesome. Android has eight cores. Can somebody explain to me the difference between the the ARM-based processing and this? Uh, well, I've, we don't want to put everybody to sleep, right? But, like, the CPU is twice as fast, and graphics are twice as fast as well, Apple's claiming with this new processor. And it's a great way to stay in shape. <laughs> uh, the CPU performance is 40 times faster than the original iPhone. See, I love comparisons like that. They're, like, kind of meaningless. There's not a lot of people have the iPhone. Have you ever tried to use the original iPhone these days? I have an iPhone 3G here. And, no, no. oh, my God, using that thing is, like, God, that thing is so slow. No, so that's the built-in obsolescence. OpenGL ES3.0. Wow, the performance is, is remarkably... Yeah. This Oh, so the, the performance is... is the, the biggest increase of... Um, it is twice as fast as the iPhone 5. It looks more than that in this fancy chart here. Yeah. And they're, they're talking of graphics-intensive games now, and it looks like we're going to roll into a demo. So this is you what know, Apple does every time, right? I mean, they, they, they throw in a, a more powerful processor, but it looks like they're really harping on it this time. I've never seen so many specs yeah, in an yeah, Apple presentation. A lot of performance talk. Yeah. You know, what's even 64 more interesting... 64-bit basically opens you up to, to more performance, more capabilities. It's both hardware and software, and... You know, uh, even more interesting is the fact that Bob Mansfield is not part of Apple anymore, and they're making this, like, gigantic leap into 64-bit processors now on a mobile phone. You know? I don't know. So Epic Games is up on stage right now. We're going to get the usual demo... Um, you know, I just I, I I'm still like okay, fine. We're getting a 64-bit processor on a four-inch display. Um, Calendars can open real fast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, how am I really going to enjoy a game on a four-inch display? I, I still debate that. Well, I you know I I don't know. I mean, I I don't have a problem with 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 screen size at that point, or at least I didn't before. But now that the market's like norm is 4.5 to 4.7, it's like. It, it's it's like a sh it's yeah you know. that that is literally one of my biggest complaints with the iPhone is its size. I have big hands, so do I. Not long fingers, just a fat thumb really, and uh, <laughs> it, it makes typing on it so hard. And and that's part of the other problem is that the software hasn't really improved. Where other keyboards are getting smarter, Apple's just they they, they just changed how it looked. They didn't add um, uh, I'm, prediction I'm, I'm, software. I'm, 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 I'm going to debate that. I actually find the keyboard prediction on the on iOS 7. It doesn't predict. It just corrects. So well, yeah. Swift key and swipe, and with the Google stock keyboard, I can type one word, and it can sometimes predict the rest of my sentence. But iPhones, it just corrects you. You know, I, I guess it depends on your usage scenario. Like, for example, I don't even look at the keyboard to type on it at times. Um, and so the last thing, it's not that I'm not interested in, in, getting, in getting suggestions. That's fine. I just I'm not even looking forward to them because I'm you know I'm just focused on typing the word that I know that I want to type and I like the fact that it always gets it right. You know, yeah, I use Swift key. By the way, I am like 
Pro Swiftkey, and look at that chrome ring around the phone's home yeah, button. Yeah, I imagine we're going to hear about that in a second. They'd... Wait a tiff. Wait a tiff. The home button doesn't have the little uh, square in it anymore. No. Uh, yeah, it doesn't. Uh, so, there... so we now the have a chamfer edge. The developer of uh, Infinity Blade is saying that normally it would take a lot of work to convert some to 62-bit, uh, or 64-bit, rather. But uh, it, with Apple, it took two hours, apparently. I think that's the Infinity Blade developer, so that's interesting. You did it on the crapper. And my friend, uh, my friend, my friend Chris continues to give us uh, interesting information here as in terms of the 64-bit instruction set. Uh, should be twice as fast, yes, indeed. But only makes a big difference in memory addressing and instruction sets. That's yeah. actually nice. I don't know about you guys. What I've been saying for years. What? <laughs> uh, we the whole memory brand? management is, is actually good. You can mul you can have more applications to multitask. I assume. Yeah, um, I think my biggest problem. People are in the comments on YouTube are saying that I'm I'm biased and bashing Apple. I'm not. No I'm way. Just... People are wait. People are making bias claims in the comments. Oh my God! It never yeah, happened. Throw your hands up. No, my problem with the iPhone and Apple is that I've been using it for years, and they keep changing and updating things, but they don't really speak to me. They haven't really addressed any of the issues I've had, and that makes it difficult for me to want to continue using it. Does it mean it's a bad phone? No. Yeah. Does it mean it's not great. No, it just doesn't speak to me like it used to. They're talking about the uh, the 64-bit architecture enabling things like <laughs> depth of field and, and focus and blur and stuff in the game, but they also just said they all, it also enables lens flares that would make J.J. Abrams proud. <laughs> yeah. I am LOLing about that. <laughs> You know, you know what this this phone needs is like when you're when when the, the less informed technology no less technologically informed population talk to their friends and say are you gonna get the 5s they say what's the difference they're gonna be like oh it's got a 64 bit chip and um, it's 50x faster and um, yeah so hopefully so there's something here where it's like it can read your mind. Right, right, yeah. right. No, you're making a good point because it's so hard. It, like, I, we all have new phones all the time, right? They're all new review devices, and people ask, oh, what's special about it? And I think many, some manufacturers forget the importance of being like, even if it's a gimmick, and Samsung does not do this. Samsung knows the importance of gimmicks. But you need to throw in two or three things there where it's like, I, need, I can show you something in two seconds that will make your phone look lame. Yeah. And that's, that's a very powerful thing for the, for the common uh, side person you talk to on the sidewalk. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, like, I guess, for example, Brandon posted something on Facebook this morning. It was like, today is iPhone. Today is iPhone day. And I, you know, I, I found it really interesting that, uh, you know, the comments were immediately like, oh, I'm waiting for iOS 7. You know, from, you know, two people that I assume are not in the industry. And this is, you know, for me, every time that I ask people, it's like, what version of Android are you running? People don't know. They have no clue how to update the software on their phone. No. Um, no clue, and still they know what iOS 7 is. You know, I, you know, I'm either at the gym or someplace, and everybody's like, "Oh, you've got the new iOS 7," but then when they look at my at, at the Galaxy S4, they have no clue if it's running 4.2.2 or whatever. Well, yeah, they're very different ecosystems. I mean, you can't you can instantly yeah. tell when an iPhone is running the new iOS because it hasn't changed in five years, and now suddenly it's different. You know. Yeah. And, so there's a new part, the M7. It works alongside the A7. It's called a motion. Co-processors. Oh, this is exactly what the Moto X8 mobile computing system does. Cool. Uh, so so it, it, it's 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 a, uh, natural language processing. It, well, let's see. Without it, that part, yeah. So generation of uh, apps. That's boring. Basically, yeah. when I pick up my Moto X, data. it's not boring for all the for all the fitness dudes who are going to carry their yes, iPhones in the arm. It continuously measures motion data, accelerometer, gyroscope, compass, enables a new generation of health and fitness apps. Okay, nice. And really contextual awareness. This is a. I figured they would make this push. This is exactly what Motorola is doing with the X. Yeah. Yeah, using the iPhone on a treadmill is an exercise in frustration. No, I believe it. I, I believe that anything that takes place on or near a treadmill is an exercise. In <laughs> I stay far away from those, as, as you can tell. Well, I can tell. Yeah, I can we tell. talked about on the podcast a couple weeks ago. Yeah, both of you, but neither of you is invited okay. on the podcast ever again. Hey, hey I didn't say that. Be able to it my words. I might send you a fat. <laughs> Listen, okay, so are they totally killing the mm -hmm. Nike fuel ban with this thing? No, this is know. Nike. This is Nike. Yeah, yeah well, they're totally well, killing the fuel ban with this thing. If their if their implement if their uh, you know their implementation is going to be something like capturing everything that you do during the day with this what's the Nike fuel ban. Tell it. Tell tell us slobs what the Nike oh, fuel ban. Um, I have one uh, at Taylor home. Has one. Taylor has one. Yeah, you wear a band on your wrist and it takes your um your movement data and turns it into fuel points, which really don't have any value. They're kind of. Uh, but you set a goal. 
Yeah, yeah so you set, like, a goal, so it's lame. set a goal. You set a goal for these arbitrary and numbers the and, thing yeah. and what yeah. you're looking for is for a calorie burn specific during the day. That's what you're looking for. Battery life oh. is 10 hours, blah, blah, blah. How does that compare previously? Uh, it's about the same, isn't it? 10 hours of browsing, LTE browsing. Yeah. Well, 10 hours LTE browsing is different, I think. I think that's yeah, a little that's longer. Different. Yeah, ten hours. L- three, Look, ten, this three talk time is about the same. This actually. is so true. This is so true. It's I, I don't understand why it is with the iPhone that their three G performance is lesser than their LTE performance. Every time that I go to the United States, my battery lasts twice as long as it lasts. Here. LTE is just a very efficient uh, technology. Well, it, it wasn't like that. Everybody remembers the HTC Thunderbolt. Your battery pretty much went yeah, dead. Yeah, that, that was back, that was back when they had used back a separate back. board entirely for LTE. Yeah. You, so every time you switch to LTE, you were actually flipping on another radio. So um, all right, we're talking about the camera now, which is what I am extremely excited or concerned yeah. with. Eight yeah. megapixel eyesight camera. No, no, you son of a! No, <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> okay, for most of if they, if these guys bring optical image stabilization to this camera, they're gonna nail it. No way, no way. There's no way that it's in there because they don't have enough space in the frame to do that. I don't think. I really you don't. You never know, do. man. You never know. Five element Apple lens designed with uh, with uh, f two point two yeah. aperture. What does that mean? Fifteen percent larger sensor area or active sensor area. So Wasn't that's... it two point two before? Or is it well, 2. It's, it's it's the same five element Apple lens that they had yeah. before. Yeah, that's the same the same lens structure. Yeah, uh, but we don't know about sensor size. It's larger active sensor area, but fifteen percent larger active area. But that might only be for eight megapixels, which would be kind of like a HTC ultra pixel thing for. Eight megapixels, maybe. I'm, yeah, bigger pixels make for a better picture. Phil says. Oh wow! Hey, no ultra pixel here. Well, not <laughs> ultra pixel, but basically ultra. they're doing with. You, you yeah. put some of them ultra pickles in there, and we'll just. I need <laughs> more ultra, ultra pickles. Ultra um, pickles. We have we have twelve hundred people watching right now, so thank you for tuning that is in. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank you for tuning yeah. in. Awesome, Appreciate it. For uh, for experiencing the wonder with us. I want to remind you guys uh, on the stream with me that the uh, this is not the iPhone six. You should not no. expect a twenty six megapixel camera with optical image stabilization on this. This is the five S. <laughs> Everyone keep that in mind. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, Be nice. Still? Okay, so these bigger pixels wait, the HTC one has optical image stabilization. Yes, yes, it does. Yeah. So you know, because you remember that they made that whole argument where those those ultra pixels w- would allow more light intake. But then the thing is, aside from the ultra pixels, there is also optical image stabilization. So apparently we're getting bigger pixels on this phone. So most likely it'll have better low light performance, yeah. but it's not optical image stabilization. Uh, One point five micropixels. Um, that is, I think, I think HTC's one has two point something ultra pixels. I think has two even or two point two. I think um, it was two even. Two even. Might, uh, two even sounds right, but one point five, which means the standard. Camera has, I think, like 0.8 to 1, I believe, in in micropixels, which means that that's a pretty significant upgrade. Can one of you guys decipher this this camera talk that's coming through here? Because I can't put any context to this. The, the camera the camera app sets white balance exposure, creates dynamic local tone map. Where's Adam Lane? Um, auto focus <laughs> matrix, metering 15 zones. Okay. It uh, takes multiple photos at once and picks the best. There's also a true tone flash. And they're they're talking about um, the different kinds of light, outdoor sky being the the whitest, candle flame being the most orange. Whatever color your flash is, it's going to clash with the color in the room, especially skin tone. So yeah. th- this is a little bit of an invention thing. I think a multicolored flash that will help to not make you look ghost white. You know, if you're close up, you take yeah. a picture. It's just like <clears throat> it's like the lighting I have for my video set. If I used standard incandescent bulbs. All my videos would look really ridiculous and crazy, so I use white yeah. bulbs to mm-hmm. get you yeah. know a balance. In, in my case, I use yellow bulbs, and I have to set the camera into candescent light. That's that's yeah. the way. Holy crap! So these two these two LEDs can flash in a thousand different combinations, making it more and more 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 uh, what's it called? So I think it, they probably have like a, a yellow one and a white one to make yeah. it kind of you can balance it out. I think Dark. it's amber and white actually. Okay, yeah. 
Um, okay. So this is some cool stuff, guys. I, I, okay, what I'll, it looks I'll like admit, to me. I'll, I'll admit this. I hate taking photos with a flash, but you know, for me, the iPhone 5 has been like the only phone that, not the 4S, by the way, not the 4. The 5 has been the only one that nails night photography with a flash, like a point-and-shoot camera. It's so pretty I, good. It does a good yes, job. I, I could leave my CyberShot, the old CyberShot that I used to have. I leave it back because the iPhone gives me just the same photos at night, uh, you know, from a party or. If from you're whatever. using a flash, now this is something that I was wondering exactly. if you were going to see because I if if this thing is still going to take the same low light photos, and not that they're bad, but it just still doesn't hold a candle to dedicated okay, auto, low light. So, so it's 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 auto image auto yeah, image stabilization. stabilization. I don't know. No, that sounds like digital stabilization to me. Yeah, it, it, it is digital stabilization. Now, I since we're talking about cameras, I have to bring this up. I never use flash. I absolutely hate yeah. flash. I, flash is like a last yeah, resort I hate for it anything too. ever. Oh, so, I'll give you a flash. Yay! Oh! I, if I had beads, I would throw them at you, but I or throw them at the screen. Um, no, but well, this thing has two flash. Uh, you have your xenon and your standard LED flash, and I leave one thing on at all times, and that is the focus flash. Focus light, yeah, 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 because I can focus at night, and then optical image stabilization makes it, you know, yeah, it's take more like pictures. Way to handle it. Yeah, so Bird that's mode. something you couldn't do before. You couldn't separate the two. So I'm, I, I'm, I've really liked that a lot, except hey, for. Can you tell me? I'm sorry, Taylor. Can you tell me? Did the previous iPhones not have burst shot? Because this one does. No, no, no. But cool. who uses burst shot? I don't know. Dude, I use burst shot all the time. Give me an example of when it's awesome. I was uh, just when using Michael's it. brushing his hair. Yeah, yeah. You can see the individual strands <laughs> adhere to the brush and then free themselves. It's real. It's amazing. He does it. He does it for um, hair brushing gifts. All right, no, but for real. real. So, so, so for real. On a boat, uh, I love taking shots of the wake receding into the distance as I'm f screaming by on a boat, and the f American flag is doing this thing. And you know, you've tried to take shots of a flag, and it's doing a stupid thing, and it's another stupid thing. You take 15 at once, the flag is going to be doing something cool in one of them, and you can snap that out. Yeah, don't, you, don't you have to delete all those 15, 14, and keep the one? If you use a dumb burst shot, but you, most of them allow you to select a, the best shot, and then it's like discard the rest. I'm like, yeah, discard the rest. Slow mo video, 120 frames per second. 120. 20 FPS, that is awesome. Holy uh, balls. I mean... My problem with, <laughs> my problem with uh, burst mode is that you have to drop the resolution of your pictures. So if you usually capture it 8 megapixels at, with a burst mode, you're probably only capturing like 720p or 1080p pictures. So that's my yeah. problem with burst mode. Man, I just upload them all to Instagram, so it don't matter. I did a video on uh, you know, it, it burst mode. It kind of does. It kind of does. It's ironic. It's like Instagram boosted their their image size uh, like a couple of months ago, and so for example, photos that come from burst shot or something look like all choppy and everything on Instagram. Nah, well, that's that's all Android photos on Instagram. It, it, it does weird stuff to Android. Oh, by, by the way, I've been using the GS4 for Instagram lately, and that's like the only Android phone that works well with Instagram. All right. Oh, let me. Uh, I'm sorry. That it's capturing 120 FPS in 720p, and you yeah. can actually select which parts of the video you want normal and which parts in slow mo. That's awesome because some phones restrict you when you're shooting at 60 FPS. Like you have to shoot in that the entire the entire yeah. video, and then like they don't record sound because it would sound really weird played back yeah. in normal speed or. Apple so stock. Cool. Apple stock is down about. Uh, it, it always is. Yeah, it's always. It always is. Is. It always goes down with every announcement, and then it skyrockets by the end of the week. This this looks like a really good camera, guys. I'm excited that they they spend a good time, amount of time on the camera because. Okay, so for so for example, for me, out of the why why is it that I like the iPhone's camera over every other camera? Um, for example, HDR HDR is actually something that you can leave on on the iPhone, and you'll still get good photos. Meaning, if I try to use HDR on the GS4. I actually like the HDR on the GS4 more, more, but you know it takes forever for it to take the shot, and it always comes out moved. Or, and I don't get that problem with the iPhone. It's it, I don't always get issues with HDR. I don't know. I, it, the phone just knows. It. For example, in sunrise, if you want to take a sunrise photo, the iPhone will always nail it, regardless of what and mode you have. That it's funny because there are differences in HDR execution. I like if you see an HDR photo taken with an HTC device, you know it because there's crazy fringing around the edges and yeah. there's all this kind of there's like a halo around stuff. Yeah. It's really artificial looking, which can be cool sometimes, but you don't always want that. Yeah, I agree. The iPhone, well, the iPhone is what uh, kind of popularized HDR for mobile photography, yeah. so it only makes sense. Yeah. That would be the one they, and, and they do it the fastest. I mean, they do it the fastest. They didn't talk about the uh, the the resolution of the camera yet. Interestingly, 
Yes, that's I think I think that probably means it's eight, which is twenty eight. Oh, 28 megapixel panoramic shot. <laughs> I almost read no, that. Like, you, what? Can, you can adjust exposure automatically during the panorama. That's awesome because Holy if you're trying to take one with the sun on one side and dark on the other, and yeah. it's like looks like you're on some alien planet. All uh, right, here we go. Here we are. <laughs> we're, we're talking about the fingerprint now. The third feature is all about security. It looks like there's okay, only. Wait a second. So they never mentioned how many megapixels this camera has. It's gonna be eight. They don't want to talk about yeah, megapixels. They don't want to talk about it. Then it's eight. Yeah. Yeah. Megapixels just, don't matter. Does that sound familiar? Honestly, honestly, there's it's nothing curious. wrong with eight megapixels. It's no, absolutely not. I mean, it's, it's fine. I mean, there if, isn't. You 13, 13, if, you a, if you have a thirteen megapixel camera and you want a sixteen by nine photos, they're nine megapixels. Nine anyway. point. You're down to nine point six anyway. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's pointless. So they're yeah. showing off handcuffs, um, talking about passcodes, how they're a big pain in the ass. Well, okay. They if yes. they if they nail that fingerprint scanner, fine. Yeah, this iPhone. I'm telling you, it's going to be an instant reader. You won't even know it's, it's going to be wonderful. Anything. They wouldn't be including it if it wasn't excellent. Yep, yep. They're not going to give a this little. You know, I, it's, honestly, this is foolproof security. If they figure out a, the right way to do it, I mean, I'm not going to have to worry about passwords anymore. But and, and Phil is making a good point. Some people find passcodes. Um, Phil Schiller. I'm, I'm not on first name basis with Phil Schiller. Some people find passcodes uh, cumbersome. He said, I, "I do too. I, I do not set up passcodes on my phones because I, I don't want to put them in every time I unlock the thing. I hate them. But I skip. <laughs> it's called Touch ID. That was the name that was leaked. It's official. Everything, every last detail has been leaked. It's it looks like it's an app, and which makes me think that there is an API, and third parties can take advantage of it, so you never have to enter a password again. Uh, why couldn't they do that with sharing, so that I could, you know, share to, you know, I don't know, Google Plus from the photo app? Because they don't want to include Google Plus, man. Yeah, nobody cares I don't care about if it's Google Plus. <laughs> I, I want to share to TweetBot or anything but the stock Twitter client well, or just, Facebook. Just imagine how many apps are, in, uh, are on the App Store, and just imagine how many options for sharing you're going to have to, what? Guys, there's a whole nother list of specs to pay attention to now. Holy. 170 micron thin, 500 ppi resolution of the sensor. It scans sub-epidermal skin layers and has a 360 degree readability. What? The, 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 the 360 degree... It your finger off. It what does that your finger off. Oh, Brandon, does that, does that mean it doesn't matter what, what orientation you put your thumb on it's, it in? It's perfect, because most people pick up their phones, and, they, and they, they don't align their finger perfectly in the center, so you can do it like, you know... You know right, right, okay, okay, that's what... I'm that telling you, this I is going to be like, like the... Go ahead, I thought it meant like you could put the, <laughs> your thumb on like any, all around the phone. Yeah, it can read in any orientation. Um, oh, my gosh, could... this is nuts. Stainless steel detection ring, so it detects your fingers actually on the button. It gives so you, you a little shock. It's a little vibration. Yeah, it gives you just to keep you awake. The porn industry are like this. The ring around the home. Thousand bolts. Uh, so it, 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 it's a detection <laughs> mechanism that will turn on the touch ID sensor. Like those Man, little chicks that you sit in your palm and they just, chirp. Listen, just the fact that I get to take away my password is like, wow. It's awesome. And and you know what this means? You're going to have a whole other level of personalization when you first buy the phone. It's going to be even more like affixed to a piece of your heart where it's like, okay, I, hi, I'm your new iPhone. You're like, hey. And then it's like, teach me about your fingers. And I'm like, you got it. <laughs> hey. You're going to be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, it's, it's time for an I was right moment. You can simply touch your home button to unlock your phone. That's so cool. You don't have to press wow. in. You just tap it. Okay, now, that was, that was if, right. this, if this is going to be part of iCloud Keychain, this is going to nail it. All your passwords and everything nailed in your fingerprint. Here, you can also scan your fingerprint to do stuff in apps, like authenticate iTunes for there. buying apps. It's yeah. gonna be, they're going to build this into the MacBook Air. It's going yeah. to be a full... This is, this, is, this is kind of a revolution because we haven't yeah. seen... Um, nobody, nobody has nailed it right. They're not the first, but they're nailing it right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll see if they nail it right. Maybe, maybe it'll yeah. explode. Like you know, uh, what was that? What, what was their last uh, facepalm moment? I don't know. Antenna gate. <laughs> nah. I, I, I just want to provide. Scan your a, fingerprint and your phone crashes. I want to provide an update <laughs> to the people watching. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. I'm sorry for talking over each other. When when exciting shiz happens, we go a little nuts. We geek out a little too much, but. Hey, the home button's completely flat, by the way. It's flat. So that ring is not raised around it? No, it's it, it, it's actually it, in. It goes in it, like a divot. It sinks it in. Ah. It's flat, but it's sunk in. I like this. For, this is. I think this is Joni Ive talking, doing Man, the narration on the that, video. That golden phone looks so cheesy. It's not really? just rampant tech what? for tech's sake. I like that. It's not just technology for technology's sake. Every component and process has been considered and measured to make it truly useful. That's awesome. 
right, this you, I, there's nothing you guys else. like this this fingerprint thing, and and I kind of do. Um, oh, here we go, Taylor. Come on. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, it, it's a good idea. It on. is. It is, but I, I kind of like the NFC thing or trusted devices because if oh. I'm in the vicinity, because you have this geo, you have a geofence, basically. You like NFC, so you want to carry this okay, extremity Taylor. on your body? Taylor, you do not or have this. kids. You do not have kids. If you, so I'm going to have to take off my watch just because I'm, I'm five feet close to my phone and it's going to unlock my phone and I don't want my kids to use my phone. No, I, if I want it to lock when it's on my pebble and it's connected, all I do is take lock. Okay. Yeah. You're, si you're single, trust me, you're a single man, and that's the reason why you understand that, you know, trusted devices make sense. But uh -huh. for the rest of the world that uses a passcode lock for a specific reason... Um, what are you looking at? So the, home button, the, home button is, uh, the home button is Sapphire Crystal. Who cares? It, it acts as a lens. Who cares? Our friend, our friend Jeff Nestle Pat at, at, at uh, G G <laughs> GE Technologies. No, GT. Um... <laughs> So the Sapphire Crystal X has a lens. The sensor takes a picture of your fingerprint and analyzes it. Yeah, it's basically a, like a, a dedicated camera with a very specialized sensor. That's really really cool. You know, what I cool? love that it can read multiple fingerprints. Yeah, that so is... you have multiple users. Yeah. So I can have my baby's fingerprint in there. It's gonna be awesome. Oh uh, uh, yeah. My only concern right. with the fingerprint scanner and is that your finger will be chopped off by a nefarious <laughs> no, car robber. No. No. What What if it's not that accurate? What if you have to scan, 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 and then it works? I mean, I don't know. I've never used a fingerprint scanner, so I wouldn't know. No, it's going to be like like cutting into a cake with the sharpest knife you've ever used. Okay, so right. for example, I used to I used to have a when I used to in my previous job, I used to always have IBM computers with with fingerprint scanners, and they were very accurate. Like every single time, they would work. And uh, it's never stored on Apple servers. It's not anywhere in iCloud. Like your authentication information stays on the device. It seems so. That's good. Yeah. I That's wonder good. how long the device retains. So, but the device has to hold on to its memory of a of your fingerprint. It has to ha have a, a control set for a match. So, if somebody steals your iPhone, I, I hope it's. I mean, it's got to be encrypted, right? But yeah, they, they won't be able to unlock it anyway. Level. But they won't be able to unlock it anyways. Say it's unlocked already, and they they take it or whatever. You know, I'm sure yeah. there's. I'm sure the, there's a way to get around this, and then grab that fingerprint data off your iPhone, and then and then are you more screwed than somebody getting your you, you can't change your fingerprints. It's like, oh, somebody stole my password. I got to change my fingerprint. Dude, you know, all I, you got to do is take a razor blade and change the. Just, just it's like a carrot peeler. Just like ah, oh, there we go. There it's, we go. It's, it's just a lighter. It's, Burn it's your fingerprint funny. off. It's just funny that they're keeping the power button on this phone. It doesn't make any sense to have it anymore. What, the I power mean, standby? The yeah, power standby button. If, if you can just unlock the phone with your fingerprint, that should be just the only button you have. So the price is... So, so the home button is not going to be a button anymore. That's going to be... Oh, how, how is it going to be? Does 64 it, gigabytes. Uh, it doesn't look pricing. like it's doing 128, which is kind of uh, surprising and depressing. Yeah, same pricing, same storage. Yeah, they're not going to do that. Does anybody know if 64-bit apps will take up more space relative to the 32-bit counterparts? Probably mm, not. Actually, I don't think I, so. No. Actually, it was the other way around. Some 64-bit apps would be, I remember, between the 32 and the 64-bit architecture, some 64-bit apps were actually smaller. Okay. Yeah, Maybe. Adam Lane and Joe Levi are somewhere like being like, yeah. what? These guys are talking about stuff they don't know about on the, on the yeah. show. <laughs> Hey, is it me, or do these three colors next to each other just look depressing? Is it just me, or, or the gold phone looks uh, cheap? Someone on Twitter posed a very good question. You have to take your glove off if you're wearing gloves. Uh, oh. So how does it work in the winter? Uh, you you Bostonian, you... Just, just set a password. Shoot. Or so don't, don't set a password. The case I mean, I guess have... you're going to have to take a glove off to use the screen anyway, because it doesn't have a super sensitive display, so... They're yeah, doing man. a case, not a bumper. The case covers the entire back, which is pretty amazing, uh, yeah. to cover up all that goodness. Yeah, why is that? That's, like, amazing in the bad way, right? Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's very strange. iPhone 4S so is going to stay in the lineup, and it's going to be free, the 8 gig. Oh, but they're dropping it to 8 gigs. That's actually a set. Who can live with 8 gigabytes today? Pre-order starts on Friday. Woo -woo. I wonder and when it's shipping. 13. For that's the 5C, right? Um, yeah. Is yeah. it? 5C is available for pre-order on September 13th. The 5S and 5C will be available September 20th in stores. When can you pre-order the 5S, bro? I don't know, bro. On September 13th, they, they, they're not distinct in here. Yeah, that's just September 13th pre-order. Okay. But I can't wait 10 days! What am I going to do until then? 
Oh, use that, your uh, iPhone 5 down. because it's exactly the same without an, a fingerprint scan. Readers, listeners, say that I was planning on going out of town. Brandon is not a fanboy. He's not. Who, who's yeah. calling me fanboy? I'll, I'll, I'll find where they live. Everybody. This is the first time that China will get the iPhone at launch. That's a big See, deal. Oh, yeah. There, gonna, oh, so, so nobody's going to get in the United States. They're going to run out of stock by the second day. <laughs> NTD Dogomo will also be getting the iPhone in Japan for the first time, so they're they're expanding the footprint significantly. Let's see if the stock's up on that news isle. It's well, not gonna it's not gonna raise itself. It won't raise itself the whole day. Call, uh, call me a hater, but I'm just your, not your blown away. Your is gonna have to wait. What Taylor? Oh, I said oh, call Taylor. me a hater, but I'm not blown away. I mean, oh I'd... Taylor, you're too young to understand. I'm too young. <laughs> Listen, it's Taylor. Because I don't have kids. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Taylor, it's you not. don't have kids. That's why you're not blown away. Yeah. All right, Tim. Tim. <laughs> like, they, they don't oh, answer the... Do the, I take that in the simple sense or in the double sense of what you just said about blown away? Uh, <laughs> that's gross, Jaime. Jaime has so many kids, he's so wise and experienced. He is the experience of a 150-year-old man. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's just like they, they keep adding these things that don't really matter to me at all. Like the fingerprint scanner, that's a good implementation. That is a good thing. It's so funny because the, stuff, like, Tim Cook, Tim Cook is directly arguing with you with you right now. Like he's watching this live stream and he just said, "These iPhones are packed with remarkable tech, but we've done it in a way that makes it matter to people, making things easier. We don't just pack in feature after feature." So he's making the opposite point. But this yeah. doesn't matter to you. It doesn't saying. matter to me because I, I share a lot. Uh, for for example, if I'm in the browser and I want to share a link. I like to shorten my links, so the the ability to share a web page to the Bitly app would be perfect. But I have to copy, paste, open Bitly, paste. Sorry, I'm copy. sorry. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, what the? I, so I, don't, I don't even know what Bitly is. No, 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 no. I, I get you. You're, you're making an okay point, but it looks like these are going to matter to a to a broader spectrum of people than say a similarly uh, limited feature set of device like the Moto X. Like, I mean, I think it's going to be interesting to see how these compare as far as appeal. To regular people, right? Uh, it's it's going to so, blow them away. So in our case, it's it's it, there is a point in in using things like Bitly, but for the mass majority, well, I'm, not, I'm not just saying just Bitly. Anything. If you want to share a link to anything outside of email, Twitter, SMS, and Facebook, and that's all stock apps. If you wanted, if you use Gmail, for example, and you want to email a page instead of actually using the stock mail app. You can't. You have to go into it and create. Okay. You have to go into the Gmail app, create the the okay, so the message, I'll, paste. I'll, I mean, it's just. But I, I think that's going to take like five or six steps to every single process you ever want to do. But I think that's going to change. Like for example, every time that I there's this new picture frame app that I use, um, and in the past uh, I would have to create the the photo. I would have to save it in the camera roll and then go to Instagram and upload an Instagram. Whereas now I create the frame within the app and then I share directly from there to Instagram and it takes me there. Right. Yeah. So basically they're putting all of that footwork on the developers. Instead of just releasing an API where they can say, hey, hit the share button and you can share to any of these apps, each developer has to go in and code support for Instagram where you have to log into Instagram within this app. Then you have to log into Facebook within this app. You have like to log into Twitter. It's like like getting awful, awful, we're getting awful granular here, guys. If I would tune out at this yeah, point. Yeah, can you guys shut up? I'm just you know, <laughs> Seriously. Just saying. That, that is a, a big shortcoming of iOS. So, okay, guys, Tim, Tim is thanking the team involved. You. They're, they're wrapping up in Cupertino here, so uh, I think we should, we should uh, think about that. They want to return to music, though. It looks like they're doing a sort of a semi one more thing here. Yeah, maybe. Uh, what's... Before we close, I'd like yeah, to return to... They didn't talk about quiet. iTunes at all, right? I mean, we haven't talked about that. Well, this is September. I'm surprised that they haven't had their September music event. Oh. Well, they, well, they, they talked about cool. iTunes, um, the iTunes yeah. event at the very beginning. Oh, oh, by that? the way, Brandon, Brandon, have you used iTunes Radio? Uh, no, I hear it's amazing, though, right? It's really good, you know. It's it's. I just tell it, it, it for example, it, it does better prediction of what I like to hear than Pandora uh, or, or that Spotify radio. I don't know why, and it, I, I think it's it's smart because obviously it's made me buy like ten songs in the past week. Shoot. <laughs> All right, so There's I know we, I know you love music, Apple. There's hey guys, an invited guest apparently. What's up? Want to do something funny? Let's all see who can look the stillest on video. One, two, three. Oh come on. <laughs> Are we serious? <laughs> that was awesome! <laughs> that was awesome! 
Oh, guys. Oh, guys, serious? I've, Come I've on. Just, I've just received confirmation <laughs> that I'm glad I'm not in Cupertino because Elvis Costello is there, and I'm really... Oh, oh God. Yeah. Who cares? Oh. All Taylor, right, so... Taylor, how many, how many viewers do we have? We have 1,227. That's Thank awesome. Thank you very much for joining, and Elvis Costello is on stage. And well, although although most of you guys on here, you three, don't agree with me, a lot of people on YouTube do. So at least I have their support. <laughs> for the first time in history. Uh, look at this. Yeah. Look at this. It's a spot for a tear. It's just not going to be filled can you, right. Can you uh, play the world's smallest violin for me? Yeah. Oh. So uh, what? What's? Uh, I don't know. I feel like we we should have some takeaways here, and I kind of I kind of sort of don't know what to do with this event, Brandon. Well, let me let me start here. The the um. I. I think that the iPhone 5 is a fantastic phone, and I think one of the places that it has a little bit of a shortcoming is in low-light photography. And it seems like they might have addressed that and even come up with something innovative with this um, this dual flash. Right now, I'm using uh, the, the HTC One with uh, the Google Play Edition ROM. And this is an amazing device. It's so fast, great battery life, but the camera sucks. I can't take pictures with this. I take pictures of my daughter doing funny things, I look at them later and I think, I miss that moment because this camera sucks. I need a phone that has a great camera. Uh, and Here's one. The, <laughs> that's, that's the problem for me. It's right? just the camera. That's just the camera, sadly. That's the, I'd, that's I'd rather for me, go buy a cyber shot. It's just a camera. For, the Lumia 1020 is just a camera. It doesn't have the apps that I need to live my life. And yeah. so I can't use that, but I would if I could. So for me, like, there's no other choice uh, but to sort of prefer the iPhone because for me it does everything that I need and I think the 5s I don't care about the fingerprint scanner faster is always better and the camera is is a huge thing for me so I'm I'm excited for it what do you guys think I do care about the fingerprint scanner for me it's like even even if you know I think about it I, I'm looking at my iPhone 5 and I'm like well you know there's not even if the camera is better on this 5s it's not like the camera it's not like if the camera on the 5 was bad. Um, so the, I guess the only thing that's nailed me is that fingerprint scanner. It's the fact that I won't have to be because I am a password guy. I have passwords on everything, um, and I do for for particular reasons. You know, here theft is so high um, that you really want to make sure that your your information is protected. Um, and for me, that fingerprint scanner is like foolproof. There's just no nothing to worry about anymore, and that's really the the reason why I want it. Unless somebody uses a cigar, a cigar cutter yeah, in your finger. Take it off your fingertip. Oh, come <laughs> on, you guys. Kids are watching. It's bedtime in some places. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's yeah. going to have a keychain of your finger uh, yeah. to continue using yeah, your phone. Like, like, like one of those like, lucky like rabbit foot. Rabbit's foot, yeah, yeah. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I, I have a problem in that uh, I really, really think that customization of hardware, uh, customization of build is compelling. And I'm a little frustrated that Apple has decided to only do that for the 5C. It's kind of perpetuated this really annoying habit of only yes. offering customization features on low to mid-end devices. And so yeah. now I find myself almost wanting to buy the 5C because I find that one more compelling from a hardware perspective. I know I'm not going to do that because I don't want to be left behind on the 5S. <laughs> so it's like, I, I don't know, so that's frustrating to me. And I think that, uh, I, I, but but at the same time, it's counterbalanced by the I, the more gimmicky features of the 5S are the ones that I prefer. That fingerprint scanner, I don't, I don't really care about 64-bit. I know that this is very important going forward, but that fingerprint scanner is going to um, give me a whole new appreciation for device sensors and things of that sort. So I'm, I'm jazzed. I'm a little annoyed that I'm coming back to iPhone on the off cycle, you know, and it's like, it's like no. oh, this is the refresh. Are you jazzed enough to do let jazz me, hands? Let me put you out of your misery. I'm not. <laughs> what? <laughs> what, Brandon? I no, what, I, I mean, put me out of my misery. What would take? Just cut, cut off my finger. No. Don't get the phone, man. Just send it over. Come on. Yo, <laughs> on a count of three, anyone that's jazzed, do jazz hands. One, two, three. No, I refuse. I, I have, I have um, confirmation <laughs> from where Apple got their inspiration for the cases for the iPhone 5C. This comes from a friend on Twitter. Right there. Uh. There you have it. <laughs> this is the inspiration. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Lock the camera on me for a second. I, I, uh... <laughs> yes. I hate Crocs. Oh my god. Well, you can now buy the Croc phone from Apple. <laughs> the Croc phone. The Croc phone. That's the iPhone, C, the iPhone 5 Croc. 
Yeah, so, Brandon, so if, if you couldn't guess, I'm oh, not sorry. really going to be too excited over the iPhone. And people were commenting, uh, Taylor's not excited. He's bashing the iPhone now, but he'll probably own one in a couple months. I'll probably own one next week um, or on the 20th because that's my we job. All, we all will. We all will. It's, yeah, it's that, that's do. my job, and I don't know who's doing the review yet, but uh, Brandon sent me an email and told me not to sell my other iPhone, so I don't know. <laughs> I would have so, sold my iPhone 5 several months ago. That's an interesting question, Taylor, and I want to confirm this on the air with Brandon. Uh, are we, we're going to be reviewing both of these, is that correct? Uh, we're going to have to uh, do some arm wrestling, some, some heated debate, and uh, we're, we're going to have to figure this out. Yeah, we're, no, we're going to... The 5S and the 5C, though. We, we are covering both, yeah. Okay, wait a second. Are, are we still live? Yes, we're still live. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was about to do a drum think, solo because uh, we got to wrap this I, up. I think, I, think, I think Taylor. I think that the first hangout that you did went live. Um, I the never. Link that you created went live. Are these are these I logistics we can figure podcast. out off the air? Because uh, because one of us has to pee. Yeah, I never started that oh. podcast. <laughs> and, and one of yeah. us has to cue. Oh. All right. Oh, so final thoughts. Really funny. Yo, um, I just want to conclude this because we all need to take care of our bodily functions. Uh, uh, so i just going to wrap this up and say uh, thanks for, for watching us for the last hour and 15 minutes, guys. Um, we're going to test these devices, compare them to the Androids, the Windows phones of the world, and, uh, you know. It's going to be awesome. And there's a, there's a lot of us on the team coming back to it for a while. We have different perspectives, as we always do. And it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I think there's going to be some, some more and more heat in the comments, but I think it's going to be very nice. As it's always. Good. All right, guys. Well, let's, uh, let's cut it, and uh, see you next time. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you. Thank you.